Welcome to session two in the Legacy Project in relation to defilement of an evil report. Sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? But it's like getting sick, like getting sick in the natural, like catching something off somebody else. We all hear bad reports. That's what an evil report is, a bad report. Remember, you got good and bad, light and dark, right? And so evil, good and evil. And so the thing is, is that a bad report is an evil report. It will defile you. It will affect you. Uh, I don't want to be a carrier of a bad report. I don't want to gossip about other people, pull other people down just to make me feel better or whatever. And so the thing is, is that the Christian life over over decades is not always easy. You will hear things from other people. What are you going to do with that? Are you going to allow it to affect uh, affect your opinion of the person that they uh, spoke of? Uh, are you going to hear some inaccurate information or not complete information? I just mentioned a definition of a bad report, an evil report is an evil report that involves distortion of the facts, incomplete facts, because, you know, you weren't there, you don't know the whole story, um, or one-sided or false information. And and given with wrong motivation, it causes a hero to come to an inaccurate conclusion and therefore respond with unscriptural solutions. And that's my heart, is that we will grow in Christ-like, not, you know, be an instrument of the devil. Uh, You know, not pulling down, but only building up, encouraging one another, not discouraging one another. Another, right? And so it's not always easy, the Christian life. In fact, Jesus talked about the four types of soil, did he not? And uh, there's only one type of soil that produced 30, 60, and 100. And I, even in that, I want to be a hundredfold believer. But the thing is, he said, the way is narrow and few there are that make it. So we all need to guard against certain things. We've got to guard, the Bible says, against the lust of the eyes. We've got to guard against the pride of life. We've got to, got to guard against the little foxes that nibble at the vine. Offenses, offenses will come, Jesus said, right? And we've got to guard against uh, the defilement of an evil report. Proverbs 79 says, He who repeats a matter... He who repeats a matter separates close friends. Proverbs 11.13 He who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. He who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. So are you a repeater of that which you hear about somebody else? Are you? Because I want to encourage you. It can separate people, cause division in other words. But if you are prepared to conceal a matter, and love covers a multitude of sin even, right? Some Christians live such inward lives, they have nothing else to talk about except another person. (laughs) Well, I want to encourage you today, don't talk about other people. There's so many good things to talk about. Know the power of a good report. We talked about that in session one. Proverbs 6, verse 16 to 19 The Bible says there are six things the Lord hates. Do you know what one of those things are? One who sows discord among brethren. One who sows discord among brethren. I talked about how Christians even can be instruments of the devil. Wow. You know, so as a family, you know, you can go through things. As a church family, you go through things. Sometimes you go through winter seasons and we don't understand that at times. You think, well, what's going on? And, you know, but it's, it's a season. It comes to pass, right? And so there can be a lot going on in people's lives as well. But the thing is to continue on and focus on Jesus. Amen. To continue to be faithful, continue to be committed, to continue to build what we're building together, a great church for His glory. Amen. And you don't want to neglect what you have already helped uh, build. But too many people get affected by what happened is around them when they go through a bad season or something or, or or their family or their business or even their church go through a bad season or, you know, when I say a, a winter season or a pruning season. But let's let's learn from an example in the medical world. Of course, you know, the world is caught up with coronavirus and that can be dating this, but in the midst of this pandemic. But you can take examples even like the common cold, the flu. Uh, so more people actually die of the flu <laughs> a year than coronavirus. Coronavirus, that's a whole nother deal. But the thing is the flu. And, um, you know, widening the circle only compounds a problem. Widening the circle only compounds a problem. There are certain stages in the development of a disease. And it's the same way there are stages in the destruction of a spiritually healthy person. I'm going to take you through this. The same way a sick person can affect a healthy person. You can think about COVID, you can think about the flu, you can think about the measles, you can think about any natural disease that's passed on. Um, I often say hurt people hurt people. So like in the natural, first in the natural, then in the spiritual. And things can slide. That happens uh, so often and to so many. You know, you can take Eve 
Eve went to Cain, to Ishmael, to Absalom, and to Judas. All these people, you know, it happened to them. Uh, things came into their life. They listened to, uh, Eve listened to the devil, right? Um, we can think about Ishmael. We can think about Judas and so forth, so forth. But today, basically, it happens like this. Offense, people get offended, which leads to betrayal, which leads to death. That's exactly what happened to Judas. He got offended and he betrayed Jesus. And of course, he himself went out and hung himself. And so people, unfortunately, take other people with them. <laughs> That's a sad thing. First in the natural, then in the spiritual. And so there are steps to becoming affected. And we need to understand and be reminded because we've got to guard over our heart. We've got to guard our own life, right? And so these are the steps. Number one, ignorance. Let me just talk about ignorance. Ignorance of, of preventive message, me measures to avoid contamination. Sometimes we're ignorant. You know, today in COVID, people are talking about masks, talking about gloves, talking about PPE gear and, and uh, social distancing and all that. But sometimes people can be ignorant of preventive messages, number, measures. Number two, exposure. Exposure, these, these, we'll go through this, to one who's already affected. Number three, contamination. Defilement by allowing the germs to enter your system. Number four, infection. As the germ overcomes our normal defences, it goes to number five, you become diseased, where the infection destroys vital life-supporting functions. So these are the steps. Ignorance, exposure, contamination, infection, and then disease. So let's talk about number one for a moment, talking about ignorance. Talking about ignorance. 2 Corinthians 2.11. Let... No advantage be taken of us by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his devices, not ignorant of his schemes or of his ways, the Apostle Paul says. So Satan, we need to understand, you know, if we're going to get defiled by an evil report, it's the work of the devil. Many are ignorant. Many are ignorant of the danger. Many are ignorant of how it works in the spiritual realm. And I trust and pray after this session, you won't be ignorant. Many are ignorant and not aware of the destructive power of an untrue and distorted one-sided report can be. Jesus, let me just put this in there. Jesus said you're accountable for every idle word. Every idle word, you're accountable. By your words, he goes on in Matthew chapter 12, verse 37, by your words, you'll either be justified or condemned. So ignorance, don't be ignorant. A lot of people each year catch a flu because they're ignorant of it, right? You know, today we're taught to sneeze into our elbow. Well, of course, our mother's taught us that. We're taught to wash our hands. Of course, our mother's taught us that too. But, you know, we don't want to be ignorant, right? Just in the natural, then in the spiritual. So number A, under ignorance. Ignorance of how words can destroy close relationships. Don't be ignorant of how words can destroy close relationship. Don't belittle that which I'm talking about today. So important. Proverbs 17, 9. He that covers a transgression seeks love, but he that repeats a matter separates close friends. And so now you know that scripture. You're no longer ignorant on how words can destroy close relationships. B, ignorance on how the unclean defile the clean. Didn't Jesus say a little leaven can spoil the whole lump. A little leaven can spoil the whole lump. You know, words, it can be a one-sided report or a report repeated with wrong motives. Often people have a, a, a wrong motive uh, in relation to spreading a bad report. Maybe it's a hurt report because hurt people hurt people. Maybe it's a false report. And, you know, it can even be a true report that really people have no right to repeat, right? And of course, it sometimes it makes us feel important because we're in the know, we know something. Did you hear about so-and-so? Did you know about so-and-so? And so it makes us look good because we know we're in the know, right? And, um, and you've got to think about this. It's like, you know, people like to make a claim in life. And that they don't realize that they're not responsible for the people. Uh, you know, the pastor's responsible for the people, right? But a bad report can cause a lot of damage in a church. A bad report influences one uh, form of a wrong, evil report about another person. So don't be ignorant on how words can destroy close relationships. Also, don't be ignorant how bad <laughs> evil reports are given. You know, Spiritually, we've seen that communicated by words, right? But they can also be con communicated by facial expressions. Uh, if I was talking to somebody about 
uh, somebody just uh, or something, you know, just, you know, in a good way. And then the person I'm talking to raises their eyebrows, go, oh, you know, or puts their head down. You know, just a facial expression can give away and speak a thousand words, right? Gestures, gestures, you know, the tone of one's voice, um, you know, the uh, subtlety uh, can sometimes be obvious, uh, you know, angry, all these kinds. Is it sweet or is it bitter? And so don't be ignorant of how evil reports or bad report is communicated. It, yes, words are mainly what I'm talking about, but it also can be facial expressions. It also can be gestures, you know, throwing your arms up like this when, you, when somebody's talking about something. Or number D, ignorance of who gives an evil report. I know it's part of the fallen nature of man. Everybody loves a bit of gossip. Everybody loves a juicy report. Uh, everybody wants to know about somebody else. Everybody has at one time or another gossiped about somebody. Um, everybody at one time or another has uncovered somebody. And we're all guilty, but we need to keep short accounts. And as we grow in Christ, we need to get better at covering other people's faults, right? E, ignorance of what motivates bad reports or evil reports. Bitterness can be one of those reasons that motivates us, reacting uh, out of personal hurts because we've been hurt, we want to hurt other people. Rebellion, justifying a rebellion, uh, independent spirit. Deception, believing that evil reports are okay to give, that you feel that it's your job to do that, you know? Um, you know, it's your job to pull other people down because, you know, you just want to let other people know about it. Pride, wanting to exalt yourself. Guilt, justifying your past actions or your past attitude. You know, talking about the immorality in somebody's life because once you were immoral, makes you feel better, right? Envy, desiring what another person has, you know? And so, you know, they've got a new car and you're going to uh, gossip about slander and, and tell you, oh, did you see that new car he's driving, you know, and the, the facial expression and the, and the tone and everything else. And it's only because you want a new car, right? And so low self-esteem, needing to be wanted. Often people need to be wanted. And, uh, you know, they want to be made feel important. And so that low self-esteem, these can be bitterness, rebellion, deception, pride, guilt, envy, low self These can be reasons why we pass on evil reports. We don't want to be ignorant about that. Number F, ignorance on how subtle we are to evil reports. Proverbs 26, 22 says, the words of a talebearer are like dainty morsels. They go down to the innermost part of the belly. In other words, we like them. That they're like sweet to our mouth, but they're poison to the belly. I know that, you know, um, often they exalt us and then bring down those around us, those who hurt us, right? But eventually it will pull us down as well. Those who offended us, those who upset us, we want to pull them down. But And so we kind of exalt ourselves, but the trouble is we will get pulled down in the long run as well. Uh, maybe those who you dislike, because let's be honest, you may not like everybody in the church or you may not like everybody, your neighbour. You can, you can bring a bad report, an evil report about non-Christians just as much as Christians, right? And uh, it's not our job to judge those out there in the world. And, you know, when people upset you, you want to bring a bad report. And we just want to pull them down for a bit of, well, it's our right to pull them down. It's our right to talk about other people. So don't be ignorant about, you know, how susceptible we are to evil reports. And don't be ignorant on how Satan e uses evil reports. Satan uses evil reports, number one, to discredit leadership. Number two, to cause Christians to close their spirit towards another Christian. Number three, to multiply conflicts and produce more ungodliness. Number four, to get people to leave a good church and break relationships. Number five, to prompt non-Christians to mock Christianity and reject Christ. Wow, these are all reasons why Satan will use bad reports. He'll use them to mock Christianity and to reject Christ. You know, when you pull down another Christian and, and gossip about another Christian, even, even if it's a true report, if you spread it, you know, it's not good. Proverbs 6, 6 verse 6 to 19. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are abom excuse me, abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, Feet that are swift to running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. That whole 
um, three, four verses in the book of Proverbs are exactly what I'm talking about. And so we're going to go on now to about exposure, exposure. So let's not be ignorant of how they work. Let's not be ignorant of the devil's schemes, right? And ignorant of the power of a bad report. Exposure. Proverbs 27 verse 12. A wise man foresees evil and hides himself, but the foolish pass on and pay the penalty. A wise man foresees evil and hides himself. Proverbs 11.13, a talebearer reveals secrets, but he is of a faithful spirit conceals the matter. And so a talebearer, the Bible words, let me just put the Bible words out there. These are Bible words, a whisperer, a gossiper, a slanderer, a busy biter, and a backbiter. They are all Bible words for talebearer. Exposure is entering into a conversation with a person who is a carrier of an evil report. Now listen to Romans 16 verse 17. I want to help you. I want to help you guard your life from bad reports because they will affect you in a negative way. Romans 6, we've all heard things about people and, we, and then we have that opinion about the person which <laughs> sometimes is not true. And even if it is true, it's not good to have hear a bad report about a person have an opinion about that person. You know, leave them in the hand of God. Amen. Proverbs 16, 17. You know, we're not the judge and jury of one another, right? Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offences, contrary to the doctrine which you learned, and avoid them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, he's writing to the church. This is to the church. This isn't to the world This is, or the newspaper. This is to the church. I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offences, contrary to the doctrine which you've learned, and avoid them. Avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. By smooth words, flattering speech, deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. Remember what I said, good and evil? I know it sounds terrible, defilement of an evil report, but the Bible's talking about it is an evil report. Ephesians 5.10 finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of such things which are done by them in secret. So let's talk about this for a moment. A carrier of an evil report will usually test you out, test your spirit before sharing it with you to see if you're opening to receive what they are carrying, right? Any evidence of a compatible spirit that you want to hear that bit of gossip, you want to hear that bit of news, will encourage them to share with you, if I can say this, their poison. I know that sounds tough, but this is this is Bible stuff here, right? The Bible says to avoid it. Normally, as I mentioned, they're nice people. And they often, you know, will, they'll say these things. I'm just sharing this as a concern with you. I'm just sharing this as a concern with you. You know, that they will usually test your acceptance by saying things, what do you think about so-and-so? Or what do you think about this and about that? You know, you may not like something, say, happening in the church. Or say, let me, let me say, for example, you know, you may not like the, the song we sing or whatever. What do you think about it? You know, and have you ever experienced this? You know, maybe they'll drop a negative comment and observe how you react to it. Or, and, and they don't even mean to play this out, but this is how it works. They might get you to ask by creating curiosity. Have you heard about so-and-so? Have you heard about this that is happening? Isn't it true that curiosity kills the cat, right? And unfortunately, curiosity kills a lot of Christians because, you know, well, no, I haven't heard. Tell me about it, you know. Maybe they might even communicate an evil report by asking you counsel. Um, could you give me a bit of counsel? I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, been, uh, you know, heard this about this person. I just want to know how to respond to it. Or maybe they'll even ask you to pray with them about this person and uncover that person in prayer. I've known Christians to uncover other people in prayer. Lord, we just pray for Pastor Peter. Let me use my name right now. You know that he's going through this and that. And they uncover you in prayer. Or, you know, I didn't know that and what's wrong. And then that's what happens. Yeah, I didn't know that he's going through that. What's he going through, you know? And then they want to know. Um, often people want to give you the information to show that they're in the know and they want you to admire them. How, so how do you detect it? Well, number one, pray for wisdom continually. I pray for wisdom every day and discernment, discernment. We need discernment, right? Number two, 
Ask yourselves the questions, and I'll be closing this session out on this, but ask yourself these questions. Is what they're telling me uplifting? Is it uplifting? Is it going to encourage me? Is it edifying? Do I need to know this? Is this any of my business? Wow, these are good questions to ask when you're in conversation with a person about another person or about something that's happening in the church or something that's happening in the body of Christ. Is this encouraging? Do I need to know it? Is this any of my business? Is this going to cause me to think ill of that person? Is it going to cause me less to think less of that person or of that situation? What is the reason this person is telling me for? Here's a thought. If there is a problem, listen, Widening the circle only compounds the problem. Widening the circle only compounds the problem. So ask the questions. Where did they get that information from? You know, if they refuse to tell you the source of the identity, it's a dead given that it's an evil report if they refuse to tell you where they got it. Have they gone to those directly involved? The Bible tells us to go to those directly involved and to sort out one-on-one or to, or to go to those in authority, the pastor and so forth, so forth. You know, have they sought out restoration biblically? Remember, spirituality is not measured by how, we, how well we expose an offender, but by how effectively we restore one another. How, how did they get all the facts? Are there both sides to the story? There's always two sides to a coin. I've done enough marriage counseling to know that. You hear one side and you go, wow, really? And then you hear the other go, yeah, whoa, really? You know, I mean, it's incredible. It's like, am I, am I listening to the same people here? There's also always two sides. Ask the question, has this person hurt? Have they been offended by this? And if they've been offended, and I tell you what, they're talking out of that offence, they're going to offend you and there's no grace for you to forgive that other person. If they are, they can guarantee that the report will be coloured, right? So if evil reports are not cut off, then there'll be wrong attitudes, wrong opinions, wrong conclusions, and wrong actions will follow. So we're going to close out this session. We're going to go on to symptoms of infection. How do you know you've been affected by an evil report? We're going to talk about it. We all get affected by an evil report. We're going to talk about how to get healed of an evil report. And so symptoms of infection, this will be coming up in the next session. I hope you're enjoying this. This is talking about defilement of bad reports, defilement of catching a virus, catching um, like first in the natural, then in the spiritual, right? We don't want to catch things that are bad for us, I'm sure. God bless you.